that's the hardest part, knowing that my nice, comfortable home is sitting 20 miles to the north of here. <laughs> yeah. But again, we have to consider the fact that we don't want to spread it to our friends or in our neighborhood or any place. A new group of Americans evacuated amid a coronavirus outbreak arriving at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland. We talked to a San Antonio couple who is now quarantined. I'm Whitney Wild in Washington after an East Coast swing. Campaigns are heading westbound coming up. Why the schedule makes it increasingly important to gain momentum in Nevada. And after a steamy President's Day with highs in the 80s, we are going to see a big cool down tomorrow with the possibility for some rain as well. I'll be back with the 411 on our temperature drop in just a few minutes. Needing some new glasses for a new look? Coming up, we'll tell you which stores and websites get top ratings. Local leaders offering homeless people help to get off the streets. The News at 5 starts right now. And first at 5, an update today from the State Department on the people who left that cruise ship in Japan and are now quarantined in the U.S., some of them right here in San Antonio. We have learned 338 Americans were evacuated from that cruise ship. 177 went on the plane to Travis Air Force Base in California, and 151 people went on the plane to JBSA Lackland. On each plane, there were seven people isolated with positive lab tests for coronavirus. They were all taken to a facility in Omaha. And just a few hours ago, our Courtney Friedman got an exclusive interview with a San Antonio couple, two of the 144 people now at Lackland. They chose not to give their last names, but went into detail about their exhausting experience. Don and his wife, Natty, from San Antonio are finally back home from their cruise, but not in the way they expected. The coronavirus spread through their ship. Thankfully, they didn't get it. Were you aware that people on the cruise had it? We were not aware until the captain made the announcement the day we went into quarantine. Don said their temperatures have been taken regularly through yesterday when they were carefully transferred from the ship onto this plane, which took them to Lackland. Don sent these pictures telling us seven people on board had tested positive for coronavirus and were isolated from the others. Those people were dropped off in Omaha, Nebraska. They had this white plastic and it had it all taped up so they were well sealed away from the general uh, passenger population and everything. I didn't feel any type of uh, uh, anxiety or anything knowing that they were there. As they got off the plane, they got a San Antonio style welcome. People were clapping and, and wishing us well and welcoming us back. Yeah. So it was a very nice greeting. For the next 14 days, this is their temporary home at Lackland's visitors quarters. They're quarantined in that area, separated from anyone else on base. Some medics will come and take uh, our temperature twice a day. And the iPhone is so that if our temperature changes or we start feeling other symptoms that we can contact them immediately. He said the hardest part is knowing their home is just miles away. But again, we have to consider the fact that we don't want to spread it to our friends or in our neighborhood or any place. I know that there's a lot of anxiety in the process as you've expressed before, but do you feel safe? I do. Uh, you know, it's, they've taken a lot of precautions to keep us separated from the general public. And I think that we have to be as much concerned about that as our own safety here. We don't want to cause this thing to spread. Now, Don says there is security 24-7 here at Lackland in all of the gates to make sure no one gets into that quarantined area. Coming up tonight at 6, Don is telling us about the three friends he had on that cruise ship who did contract the coronavirus and where they may be now. Tim. Courtney Friedman reporting live for us. Great story. We are keeping track of the coronavirus on our website from the evacuation process to how the quarantine process works, how the virus is transmitted, and how Methodist Texan Hospital has been trained to treat patients. You can find all this information right now by searching coronavirus on ksat.com. New at 5, a man and woman found dead inside a vehicle at an apartment complex in New Braunfels. Police have ruled their deaths a murder-suicide. New Braunfels police say 34-year-old Michael Lagu shot and killed 37-year-old Desiree Barnaducci before he turned the gun on himself. The two were found dead inside a vehicle at the Sage Apartments on West San Antonio Street in New Braunfels this morning. Police believe they did know each other, but their relationship at this point is unclear. We're told both were from New Braunfels.
A 19-year-old killed in a T-bone crash overnight has now been identified. The medical examiner has released her name as Jasmine Claire Godot. Now, police say it was about 1230 this morning when Godot's vehicle was T-boned by another driver at the corner of Micron and Calebra Road. She was taken to University Hospital, where she later died. Now, police say the driver who caused the crash ran a red light and was intoxicated. That person will face charges of intoxication manslaughter. Arson investigators will investigate a house fire over on the city's west side. San Antonio firefighters called to that home on Alnwick uh, Drive near Callahan just after 4 o'clock. The fire department says that house appears to be vacant. You can see crews had to cut through the garage to get to the flames. Firefighters say there was a lot of contents inside that created a lot of smoke. The house is a total loss. It has been one year and still no answers. San Antonio police need your help solving the January 2019 murder of 35 year old John Burton. He was found dead on a sidewalk on Wood Chase, not far from Eckert and Bandera Roads over on the northwest side. That all happened last year. Police say he had been shot to death and they are still looking for the people responsible. Crime Stoppers is offering a reward for information that leads to an arrest in this case. The number to call 210-224-STOP. A 21-year-old man accused of shooting at his mom's husband now facing charges. Police say Armando Estrada Jr. went to his mother's house in October of last year and tried getting his mother to take him to a restaurant. But when she didn't agree, police say he pulled out a handgun and fired shots through the home. Now, no one was hit, but arrest records state the bullet hit a recliner chair that the husband was sitting on at the time and barely missed his head. Estrada is now charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. New at five, helping the homeless get off the streets and get back on their feet. It's what the Bear County Sheriff's Office, Haven for Hope, and the Delview Citizens on Patrol group teamed up for during a sweep of that neighborhood this morning. A mobile command center equipped with mental health care professionals, undercover and uniform patrols, helping direct some of those in need to the shelter. They also provided information on how to get help they need. Others found to have active warrants were taken to jail. Those involved say it's the first step in a comprehensive approach to solve the issue. So uh, we're always going to have vagrants in our neighborhood. Uh, they're always come back. They come out, out of state, out of the county. Uh, so what we're trying to do together with the sheriff's department is make this a reoccurring uh, activity. The Delview Citizens on Patrol group says they plan to make this sweep a monthly event. You can hear more about their efforts tonight on the news at six. As the city continues to examine and address homelessness across San Antonio, encampments will be part of their focus. Coming up at six, Garrett Berger will also explain how a plan to tackle the issue is now taking shape. And take a look outside right now. It has been a warm day across San Antonio. We started off the day with quite a bit of cloud cover, but able to see some sunshine and temperatures have really soared. This is a look at our weather watcher temperatures. I'll take a look closer to San Antonio in just a second, but take a look out toward Del Rio and Eagle Pass. Temperatures in the upper 80s out there, near 90 degrees in uh, Eagle Pass at the moment. And even closer to San Antonio, temperatures are generally in the upper 70s and low 80s, 80 in Mico, 80 up in Canyon Lake and on top of that it is humid outside that moisture is going to play into the fact that we'll have areas of light rain and drizzle but a big temperature drop around the corner as a front is currently working its way through Texas. I'll be back with a look at that forecast coming up. Thank you, Sarah. Now to the campaign trail, leaving behind snowy New Hampshire to blaze trails across Nevada, where Bernie Sanders is expected to maintain his lead. Whitney Wilde is in Washington tonight with a look at what comes next as the campaigns move west. Whitney? Well, the westbound swing is all about maintaining momentum, and there is proof that voters out west are engaged. For example, in Nevada, the early voting numbers show more than 18,000 people have already participated. <laughs> Bernie Sanders. We love you. Thank you. Love you too. Blazing into Nevada at the front of the pack, delivering a message of unity. I have absolute confidence that we are all going to unite behind that candidate and defeat the most dangerous president in the modern history of this country. The spot at the top has others in the race trying to bring him down. He's been talking about health care, me Medicare for all, universal health care for 35 years. Nothing's happened. People are much more pragmatic. They want plans and not pipe dreams. Uh, a campaign message that says that you either got to be for the revolution or you must be for the status quo. Most of us don't know where we fit in that picture. 
Sanders isn't the only candidate taking heat. Critics lambasted former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg for his campaign spending and record on issues such as stop and frisk. $60 billion can buy you a lot of advertising but it can't erase your record. Bloomberg apologized for his support of stop and frisk. Candidates now hope to confront him at the next debate. I've got to answer questions like I just did on my record, and he has to do the same thing. I know I'm not going to be able to beat him on the airwaves, but I can beat him on the debate stage. The schedule is bringing added pressure to these candidates because early voting in Nevada ends the 18th. The debate is the next day, the 19th. Then the overall caucus voting in Nevada ends the 22nd. So a very critical five-day period ahead for these candidates. Back to you. Whitney Wild live in Washington, D.C. for us tonight. Thank you. And don't forget, early voting for the March 3rd primary starts tomorrow. There are more than 30 early voting locations all across Bear County. Right now on KSAT.com, we have a full primary election explainer from what it is to which states hold primary elections. You can also find Democratic and Republican sample ballots. Election day is March 3rd. You can find all this information right now on KSAT.com slash vote 2020. More than 1,100 former Justice Department officials now calling on Attorney General Roger Stone to resign. In a letter, those officials accuse William Barr and President Donald Trump of interfering with fair administration of justice in Roger Stone's trial. Barr is accused of intervening to lower the DOJ's sentencing recommendation for Stone after the president tweeted the initial recommendation of seven to nine years was, quote, a disgrace, end quote. Now, Barr denies the allegations. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer is asking for the Inspector General to investigate. Stone is on trial for crimes related to Russian meddling in the 2016 election. He is expected to be sentenced on Thursday. Next up at five, when shopping for new eyeglasses, what's more important, the service, selection, or the price? How to get the best experience, whether shopping online or in store, next. New at five, buying eyeglasses for many, it's a necessity. And for some people, it's a fashion statement because you not only want to see well, you want to look good too. 12 On Your Side's Marilyn Moritz takes a look at which stores and online retailers get high marks from shoppers. There's no question you'll get more personal attention when you shop for glasses at a store than you will online, but you'll probably also get a bigger price tag. Cost is the big drawback at traditional retailers, according to a Consumer Report survey of its readers. Those who bought their glasses at a store and paid out of pocket spent a median $234 a pair. Online shoppers, though, paid a median price of just $91. Even so, the vast majority still bought their glasses in a store. It's all about the service. I like the experience of having something to try on in front of me. Our readers value things like the skilled fitting and follow-up service you get with a real salesperson. Costco was among the top retailers in CR's most recent ratings because you can get personal service and a reasonable price. But the frame selection is more limited than independent retailers and top online stores. Three online stores, Warby Parker, Zenny Optical, and iBuyDirect, joined Costco at the top of the ratings with good prices. But Zenny and iBuy did not do as well on quality. A tip for getting the best of both worlds is shop around for the frames you like and then go to a discount store like Costco or Walmart to get the lenses. A lot of times the technicians at those discount stores can take the lenses you buy there and put them into the frames that you buy elsewhere. There's usually a fee of about $40. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. You can use those new glasses for ready to read right now on KSAT.com. <laughs> Dozens of people flocking to the Pearl this morning and not just for a cup of coffee. Instead, they watched a giant crane hoist a delivery truck onto a third floor deck of Hotel Emma. That truck was once used to transport Pearl beer from the brewery that once sat where the hotel now stands. Head over to our webpage to read what that truck will now be used for. I'm guessing decoration if it's placed on the third floor. Almost oh, definitely. <laughs> and $2.8 million. That's how much one Southtown condo on the market is listed for right now. Wow, the space offers more than 7,000 square feet, three bedrooms, and a four and a half bathrooms. Nice. It sits on a Camp Street near South Alamo and South Flores. So what more comes with the price tag? Head to KSET.com to find out. 
every day a steak dinner. Yeah. That's what <laughs> Let's take a look at Sky 12. It is high above. Well, it was. There we are. Uh, it's over on the west side over that fire we told you about early in the show on Alnwick, which is near uh, Callahan. Looks like they've got it under control, but you can see quite a bit of damage to that home there. We'll continue to update that story online and on air. Kind of windy for the firefighters. Kind of warm, too. And warm. Definitely warm and humid outside, too. Yeah. These are summertime dew points, summertime humidity around San Antonio right now. But we are going to be seeing a front that'll move through. That'll help to really cool us down. In fact, over the middle of the week, we'll struggle to get out of the 40s, all because of the front, which is ex which is scheduled to arrive tomorrow in the afternoon. But today, it was a warm one. A lot of clouds in the morning hours didn't prevent us from warming up because we cleared up uh, in the afternoon there with peaks of sunshine, and now we've got partly cloudy skies. 81 was the high today, much above average by 14 degrees, uh, and our morning low was 57, so it was even warm this this morning uh, compared to our average morning low, which is usually right around 45. We didn't see any rainfall uh, in spite of some areas of fog this morning and even a little bit of drizzle, especially in the higher elevations. But take a look at these temperatures right now. It's close to 90 degrees down in Laredo, 87 in Catula, 88 out in Del Rio, 88 in Carrizo Springs. Temperature is a little bit cooler, but still warmer than average. Uh, New Braunfels at 80, 78 in Austin. But again, this is the kicker. Dew points are really high right now. Look at this rich green color on the map. Dew points are in the 60s, which is pretty high, almost at the top of our scale. Very muggy. We usually see dew points in the 60s and even in the low 70s in the summertime. So that's one of the ingredients for the areas of light rain that we're going to see starting tomorrow, lasting through all of Thursday, but for tonight, we'll uh, see those clouds return after sunset. It'll be cloudy, 68 right around 10. Even around midnight, we'll still be in the mid 60s. Patchy drizzle right around midnight, and that patchy drizzle will become more widespread as we head into sunrise tomorrow. Here's our weather setup across the nation. You can see how the northern tier of the United States is dealing with areas of snowfall behind a cold front. Now that cold front is currently sitting over the panhandle of Texas at the moment. And you can see the contrast in temperatures. San Angelo at 85 degrees. Meanwhile, it's 65 in Lubbock. Even colder air in the teens and 20s up in parts of Montana and uh, Wyoming. Now, we're not going to get that cold because temperatures will regulate as this cold front moves through. But this is going to be a strong, strong cold front. We'll take you through the future cast tomorrow morning, starting off with areas of fog and drizzle. That front will make it to San Antonio in the early afternoon. So we're still going to have time to warm up during the day will top off right around 70 degrees tomorrow, but that front will move through in the afternoon and then in the evening temperatures will fall into the 40s and we'll struggle to get out of the 40s not only on Wednesday, but also on Thursday because we'll continue to have areas of drizzle and light rain Wednesday and Thursday as well. So today with short sleeve weather, sun's out, guns out, but this week in the middle of the week, we are really going to be dealing with Jack weather, especially because winds will be gusty as well. Taking you through hour by hour tomorrow, waking up fog and drizzle, 65 degrees, barely warming up, but still getting up to about 70 in the afternoon. That front will arrive sometime after two o'clock, bringing with it areas of light rain, continuing to see that light rain. Then our temperatures will tumble. Our winds will switch around to the north at 10 to 20 miles per hour, and we will stay generally in the 40s Wednesday and Thursday with drizzle and light rain just about every day. On top of that, it's going to be gusty. Winds will be gusting up to 25 to 30 miles per hour, both on Wednesday and Thursday. So we will have a wind chill in the air as well. As for the weekend, we are going to warm up a little bit, but not by much. Notice that even on Friday, we'll still only be in the mid 50s for highs. Similar story on Saturday with just a few peaks of sunshine. By Sunday, we'll be back to average with our high temperatures in the upper 60s, but we're still gonna have a chance for isolated rain on that day as well. If you're wondering about rainfall amounts, because it's going to be that drizzle and light rain, it's really not going to amount to much, maybe about a quarter to half an inch of rain when all is said and done. Oh, wow. And for those who love the cold, it's back. Yeah. Some people love today's weather. Mm -hmm. Some people are wishing for it to feel like winter, and it will. It's going to happen. Yep. Thank you, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Another all-star weekend in the books. Yeah, and a different format change. So that was what everybody was kind of anxious to see, and especially in the fourth quarter. And the all-star reviews are in. We'll let you know how they did and how Patty Mills spent his 
All-Star break coming up. The new All-Star format is a huge hit, especially the fourth quarter. The first to score 24 points in that period wins the game. The number 24 chosen to honor the late Kobe Bryant. And to start the fourth quarter, the total number of points scored in the first three quarters began the period, meaning the target score to win the game was 157. That's because Team Giannis was in the lead at 133 to 124. This made the players go all out. In fact, we saw some defense, like LeBron getting blocked. We saw fouls called, which wasn't just a score fest any longer. Giannis led his team with 25 points. Performance for Kawhi Leonard was a beast. He led Team LeBron. LeBron with 30 points as Team LeBron fought back. Team LeBron thought they had won the game on this James Harden three-pointer, but it was waved off late for a charging foul. That gave Team Giannis a second chance, but the game would actually be won with free throws from Anthony Davis, who misses the first but sinks his second as Team LeBron gets the win, 157-155. to 155. I didn't know what to expect because it was a new format, new year. Um, we didn't know. None of us knew what to expect. Um, but throughout the whole fourth quarter um, and at the end of the game, everybody was like, that was pretty damn fun. That was, that was fun, and it was a great way to, uh, to end uh, 2020 NBA All-Star Weekend. All right, before the game, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver had announced that from this point on, the All-Star NBA MVP trophy would be named after the late Kobe Bryant, and the first to win it as such is Kawhi Leonard, who, as we mentioned, scored 30 points. But get this, eight three-pointers, 11 of 18 from the field overall. Words can't explain how happy I am for it. You know, uh, able to put that trophy uh, in my room, in my trophy room, and just be able to see, you know, Kobe name on there, uh, it, it just means a lot to me. Um, he's a big inspiration in, in my life. Uh, you know, he did a lot for me. And this is how Patty Mills spent his all-star break, flying all the way to Australia to help his fellow countrymen recover from the devastating wildfires that have destroyed record number of homes, property, and wildlife. Patty did what he could as he toured the devastation, posting his comments on social media. We want to be able to do you know what we can for these people and at the end of the day that, that that is what this this trip is about it's about them it's about how we can help them to hopefully be able to get them to stand back on their feet and continue living in this you know great land the Spurs don't play again until this Friday when they resume the rodeo road trip in Salt Lake City against the Jazz, wrapping up against Oklahoma City for their second shot at the Thunder during the last eight games. So far, they've only won one game in the rodeo road trip, and that is against OKC. Late word from ESPN, the Spurs have bought out Damari Carroll. We'll have more on that coming up at 6. Great to see Patty going back home. Indeed. All right, thanks, oh, yeah. Greg. We'll be right back. And in the weather, a lot to cover over the next few days. Tomorrow, we'll start off with areas of fog and drizzle. It'll be muggy for most of the day, but a front will arrive in the afternoon. That'll send our temperatures tumbling. We'll really basically be in the 40s through Thursday with areas of drizzle and light rain. It'll be gusty, too, with winds gusting up to 30 miles per hour. Thanks to that strong front, then we'll be able to see a little bit of sunshine during the weekend, and temperatures will regulate back into the upper 60s by the start of next week. What a change. Thanks, Sarah. Yeah. And thanks for watching the News at 5. World News is next. We'll see you back here at 6.